The stock market is going to advance over time. American businesses are going to be worth more money. Now, dollars are going to be worth less, uh, so that money won't buy you quite as much. But you're, you're going to be a lot better off uh, owning productive assets over the next 50 years uh, than you will be owning pieces of paper or I'm throwing bitcoins. <laughs> ah, you know, I've been meaning to ask you your opinion on Bitcoin. What do you think of it? I, 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 it's not a currency. I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 it does not meet the test of a currency. It, 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 uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 or 20 years. Why does it not meet the definition of a currency? Well, because and, and people say, well, I'll sell you goods in bitcoins, but they change the price of those every time the price of the dollar changes in relation to the bitcoin. They're pricing off the dollar. They could say, well, I'll sell it to you in barrels of oil. But if they ch every time the price of oil changes, they change the number of barrels you have to have. That's not, your, your oil is not the currency. Yeah, but the yuan does that, too. And people still look at that as a potential currency. Which one? The yuan, the Chinese yuan. Well, yeah, well, it, it is a currency, but, yeah. but it, is not a, it, is not, it is not a durable means of exchange. It's not a store of value. It's, uh, and you said yourself you wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 years? Uh, I would not be surprised. I don't know that. But... Uh, but uh, it, it's interesting to me. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's been a speculative, a very speculative, uh, you know, kind of Buck Rogers type thing. And, and people buy and sell them uh, because they hope they go up or down, just like they did with tulip bulbs a long time ago. <laughs>
And clearly, the idea behind crypto will affect conventional banking groups, where Berkshire is a shareholder. You always say you didn't go into too much detail to obtain an understanding on cryptocurrencies. So what factors caused you to say that it's a bubble? Well, generally, non-productive assets <clears throat> remain the, you know, if you had bought gold at the time of Christ, and you figure the compound rate on it, you know, it's, it may be a couple tenths of 1%. Uh, the, it, it, it's, it essentially is not going to deliver anything other than supposed scarcity, you know, because they'll only, you can only mine so many. But so what? I mean, what, is, what does it produce itself? Uh, you know, the check is a wonderful idea. Just imagine how the world would be without being able to write checks or have wire transfer of funds. But it doesn't make the check intrinsically itself worth a lot of money. And if you said you can't use something called check with a little piece of paper, you'd do something else to transfer money. I, I think that any time you buy a non-productive asset, uh, you are counting on somebody else later on to buy a non-productive asset because they think they can sell it to somebody for more money. And it's been tried with tulips and it's been, it's been tried with various things over time. And it does come to a bad ending. I like cryptocurrencies a lot less than you do. <laughs> 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 and so to me, it's just dementia. And I think the people who are professional traders that go into trading cryptocurrencies, it, it's, it's just disgusting. It's like somebody else is trading turds and you decide I can't be left out. At one point this weekend, you said that Bitcoin, and this was based, you were asked, Charlie said Bitcoin's like rat poison. You were asked about that comment and you said, well, it's probably more like uh, rat poison squared. Uh, Charlie went on in the meeting to then basically call Bitcoin turds. Um, he, he is an expressive sort, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when he gets a little older, he'll, he'll mature. <laughs> I just want to ask you about that because it sparked so much controversy, and uh, particularly on Twitter and some of the places where you might expect people who are trading in, in cryptocurrency uh, to be pretty um, loud yeah. about what they heard. What, what is it about Bitcoin that gets you guys so fired up? Well, when you buy a farm, uh, you look at the crop every year and, and what prices are, and you decide whether it was a satisfactory investment. I mean, you, you look to the asset itself and what it produces for you. When we buy a business, we look at what the business earns and decide how we feel about it in terms of what we paid. But we are buying something that at the end of the period, we not only have what we bought in the first place, but we have something that the asset produced. And when you buy non-productive assets, uh, all you're counting on is whether the next person is going to pay you more because they're even more excited about another next person coming along. But the asset itself is creating nothing. Uh, one of the interesting things, uh, for example, is, is gold. Uh, if you go back to the time of Christ and you look at how many hours of labor you had to give up in order to buy an ounce of gold and you take it forward to now, you'll, you'll find the compound rate maybe a tenth or two tenths of one percent. You know, and, and, and then you have to insure it during that time and make sure you know, somebody doesn't steal it from you. And everything. But it doesn't produce anything. And uh, productive assets... Uh, you, may, you can pay too much for a productive asset, but I bought a farm in the 1980s, and, and every year, look at how much it produced the way of soybeans and corn, and at the end of that period, I've still got the farm, and I've gotten some significant income off of it, apartment house, operating business, but uh, if, if you and I buy various cryptocurrencies, they're not, they're not going to multiply. They're not going to be a bunch of rabbits sitting there in front of us. They're, they're just going to sit there. And i got to hope next time you get more excited after I've bought it from you, and then maybe I'll get more excited and buy it from you. And actually, we could, we could sit in the house by ourselves, and we could keep running up the price between the two of us. But at the end of the time, there's one Bitcoin sitting there, and now we've got to find somebody else. And they, and they come to an end. I mean, those, so, uh, that, I mean, that's a greater fool theory. That's what you're saying? It, well, yeah. It's, 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 it's buying something because you expect the pool of people who want to buy it because they want to sell it to somebody else will grow. And, and, and you know, it, it's wonderful because it does 
a rising price does create more buyers, and people think, I've got to get in on this. And, and it's better if they don't understand it. That's the other thing about not productive. If you don't understand it, you get much more excited than if you understand it. I mean, if you buy a bond that says she's going to pay you 4% a year, you're not going to get any pleasant surprises. <laughs> she's going to pay you 4% a year. But if you, if you, you can have anything you want to imagine. If you just look at something and say, that's magic, you can do it with shark's teeth or seashells or, or anything. And, uh, you know, they did it with tulips in, in, in the 17th century in, in, in Amsterdam. And, and, and they'll do it again. I mean, people, they like to speculate. They like to gamble. And uh, if you can get something, particularly if you have something half plausible going on. Mm -hmm. If you had bought gold in 1942 and you say, we might lose the war, and we might have to run off to some other country, and you know, so let's put our assets in gold. You would have less than a penny for every dollar you got from owning stocks. Less than a penny. Now, if somebody calls that a store of value. I mean, I think they're delusionary. Okay. Uh, Andrew has a question too. Andrew. Hey, Warren. Related to this uh, issue of Bitcoin, you saw that Goldman Sachs just last week announced that they were going to uh, create a. Um, uh, effectively a trading operation around cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular. You've been an investor uh, in Goldman. What do you think of their decision to do that? Well, they probably think that lots of people are going to get very excited about Well, and uh, maybe already are, but they, they think there's money to be made trading them. Uh, I don't think they're expressing an opinion on the ultimate value. I would be very surprised if the top partners of Goldman are are, are selling their Goldman stock and putting it into Bitcoin. Uh, but I, I want to cover this subject now because my friend Charlie will come on at 8 o'clock and there's no telling what he will say. Well, that, that's my whole entire point. I do want to ask Charlie about it because I think when he talked about the turds, he was referring to this. He, he said if you're trading this, it's like watching other people trading turds and deciding you want to get a piece of that. Well, you're not going to get me to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Charlie's not awake and well, not watching Well, the truth is, right people now. do trade on very crazy <laughs> things over time. Uh, you know, imagine people selling their homes to buy a tulip in Amsterdam. Uh, if people think they're going to make money the next day, and worse yet, if they think somebody else that they know is going to make money and they aren't going to make money, <laughs> they, it, it, it just draws people in. You know, I, I, I could whisper something on this program and... and and kind of the more silly it was, the more it might react because there's no quantitative limits. If you buy a stock, you say, well, I'll buy it at 15 times earnings, but I won't buy it at 20 times earnings. But when you get into something that doesn't produce anything, you know, there, there's, no, there's no checkpoints. When I was tweeting the things that you and Charlie were saying about this weekend, all I was doing was repeating what you were saying, and people were coming back with some pretty angry comments, well, including yeah. things like, I bought a house uh, buying cryptocurrency, uh, you're outdated on this, they said a lot meaner things, that uh, you don't understand it, so you should shut up about it. What, uh, you're, you're not. Well, the interesting thing is if you're investing, you don't worry about other people. Say, what? If I'm investing in Apple, I love the idea of people saying Apple is terrible because I want the stock to go down because they're repurchasing shares and my interest will go up faster. You, you don't get defensive if you're buying something that produces that. You don't buy a, a farm and get real defensive if somebody comes along and says you shouldn't buy a farm or something. You say, look, at like, what's the crops grow and I can see what I sell. I'm selling my crop for at the end and I'm making 4% or 8% on my investment. Uh, you, you get defensive when you... You look at this thing, and it doesn't do anything. You're just hoping somebody comes along to pay you more tomorrow or the next day. And you're dependent on more people, the mob growing, you know, basically. So, so those people do get angry. But uh, the person that bought a house with it, I would say they did the very right thing. They, they sold, sold it. it. <laughs> they sold it and bought something else with it. Hey, Joe, uh, you have a comment, too? It just, I was singing it. But look how long it took you to buy Apple, though, Warren. I mean, you finally did buy it, but uh, you needed to be... You know, it needed, it just took a long time. I don't know what happens with Bitcoin, but you see, these are, I don't understand it either, but uh, it's got quite a following among, uh, among uh, uh, all these people that, you know, think it's going to 25,000 or 100,000. I mean, it did take you, you've never embraced uh, technology as much as a lot of other things that you understood a lot better. And you're finally in Apple, but what, what, what did you finally buy Apple? It's all right, it, it would, was all right, probably a $700 billion company when you finally bought it. You could have. You know, it would have been nice to buy it at $100 billion or yeah. $50 billion. 
Yeah. And I say about buying apples, I don't care whether anybody ever mentions <laughs> Apple again. I mean, you know, whereas with Bitcoin, you do, people that buy it want to tout it because they want more people to yeah. join the crowd. So they want to come on and say, you buy Bitcoin because the only, they're going to lose money unless the crowd gathers, if the crowd starts dispersing. So they've got every reason in the world to tout it. Let me ask you, Charlie, about some comments that you made over the weekend um, that people paid attention to. Um, my Twitter feed lit up when I tweeted about some of them, specifically when you started talking about Bitcoin as turds. What, why? I'm surprised that attracted any attention. <laughs> <laughs> why did you equate the two? Well, Bitcoin is worthless artificial gold which, if it succeeded, would facilitate a lot of illicit activity. Now, that is not something I think the world needs. And the fact that it's clever computer science doesn't mean that it should be widely used and that respectable people should encourage other people to speculate in it. Bitcoin reminds me of Oscar Wilde's definition of fox hunting, the pursuit of the uneatable by the unspeakable. Well, that sounds better than what I used before. <laughs> <laughs> we, we asked earlier, Charlie, uh, uh, Andrew brought it up with Warren, but... Uh, I think it's a scumball activity. Does that better serve you better? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we asked earlier about Goldman Sachs getting into the business of having a trading desk for Bitcoin. Berkshire Hathaway owns about $2.5 billion of Goldman Sachs. Does it bother you or does it not surprise you? Just Well, I don't expect every investment bank to agree with everything I think. They're, they have a lot of animal spirits in investment banking. Bill, Charlie and Warren have weighed in on Bitcoin. Do you own any? Uh, somebody gave me some for my birthday. Uh, and then a few years later, I thought, hey, I'm going to sell that. So no. Uh, <laughs> There's some really good technology in terms of sharing databases and verifying transactions uh, that is talked about as blockchain. That is a good thing. Bitcoin and ICOs, I agree completely. Uh, it's one of the crazier speculative things where it's not, as, a, as a, an asset class, you're not producing anything. Uh, and so you shouldn't expect it to go up, uh, it's, it's kind of a pure greater fool theory type uh, investment. Um, so, you know, I, I, I agree, I would, I would short it if there was an easy way to do it. I'll, I'll ask this very fleetingly, Have, has your position changed on Bitcoin? Uh, no, I mean, it's too bad, but, but Bitcoin, it, it's ingenious. And blockchain is important, but Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. You can stare at it all day and no little Bitcoins come out or anything like that. It's, it's, it is a, it's, it's, a, it's a delusion, basically. <laughs> yeah. So we've gone from rat poison squared to a delusion. Well, it's kind you of could, an upgrade. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Who knows where we'll be next year? But I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry it happens because people get their hopes up that something like that is going to change their lives and it was a very ingenious thing to figure out how to have a limited supply and make it harder to more expensive to create them as you go along and all that sort of thing but it doesn't the function as and, and this is explained to me by people a lot smarter than i am but they say blockchain does not depend on you know, and jp morgan is talking about creating their own you know jpm and and it'll it'll be worth a dollar i mean it's matched to the dollar to dollar and uh it's I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to people that own it.